What is up, my fellow Chibits? Today, I'm here to bring all of you another manga chapter review of The Promised Neverland. Yes, Chapter 2 is here. It came out today, finally translated, and I got to sit down and actually just read it. So, as you all are fully aware by now, it is a new series by Weekly Shonen Jump. I already did a first impressions on this series, I think a week or a week and a half ago. And if you've yet to see my first impressions, I will have it in the description because I do not want to spoil you. If you've yet to start this series, I recommend you to, you know, watch my first impressions or go read the first chapter. One or the other, but I'll have it linked in the description. So, getting off of that, I want to dive headfirst into Chapter 2. So, Chapter 2. It sets up the conflict for whatever arc, this beginning prologue arc of the series. The conflict being escaping from the farm. And as we know, with the events at the end of last week's chapter, we found out all these children are livestock. They're pretty much cattle to the slaughter. They're being raised to be diced up and then fed to the highest bidder, pretty much. And now with finding out like the core plot, that's kind of what this chapter does. So, uh, kind of planning out the escape and how they all the children can get out and save their lives. And there's a lot of problems in the development of this chapter because, for one, the person that is watching over them, which you could call, kind of call the farmer, the farmer that watches over the livestock, makes sure they're fed, they're bathed, whatever, you know, usually what farmers do. And so they have to kind of outsmart the farmer to be able to break out of this cage. And I really like the design of this so far. I, I gotta really dive into it and say that when it comes to Weekly Shonen Jump series, the design of this manga already is a very interesting manga. But as I said, my main worries about The Promised Neverland is not that it's probably gonna be bad, but the fact that it is too dark for Weekly Shonen Jump. I mean, the overall presentation of it is something that is completely different than you would normally see from other shonen starts in Weekly Shonen Jump. It has a very dark start. I mean, the entirety of the cast are livestock, being fed to other people. So when you think about it like that, it's a dark beginning to a shonen. And I mean, as I said, it just I'm shocked that Weekly Shonen Jump is allowing this series to even come out because I know that they sometimes like to censor things, tone it down and stuff like that. And if the series doesn't tone down, they usually ax it in 10 weeks. So I'm very scared that I'm going to get into this series, like really start enjoying it, and it's going to be axed. I'm so worried about that because it has such good potential. I mean, this chapter has so much potential. The first chapter had so much potential. There's a lot of good things going on here, and I just do hope that the series doesn't just get the fucking axe and get its neck slit like a livestock cattle or something. Hopefully nothing like that happens when it comes to the series. I don't want it getting turned into like a cattle. I, I don't want it to. So... Getting off of that note, let's talk about the core content of this chapter. So, as we know, one of the biggest questions we all had with the end of last week's chapter is why would the farmer and the people that are trying to buy these children to eat them, why would they let them study? Why would they try to make them more intelligent? That is something that raises many questions because one of the questions or answers we had to that main topic was that maybe the reason why they're teaching the children is because maybe their brains taste better. Maybe it's because their brains will taste a lot more delicious if, you know, they're raised like that and then, you know, they get to eat them. That's one good solid answer that we could possibly give to it. But then there is another. And it started making me think about the core content of what this manga so far has done in these two chapters. Let's think about this, okay? Let's look at actually our real goods in everyday life. What is the thing that normally people want to spend extra money on when it comes to food, okay? Just take a moment to think about it. I'll give you a quick second, and then I'll say it. Organic food. I'm going to be honest here. I go out of my way to spend extra money to buy organic food. I get organic milk. I get all sorts of organic vegetables, stuff like that. I go out of my way to get organic food. And if you think about it like this, what if the children, since they are necessarily livestock, what if they're being raised organically? Like, for instance, they're allowed to free roam the range, what the children do. They can play hide and seek, do whatever they want. They're allowed to study like a natural human being at an accelerated rate. They're allowed to study and be natural like a human could or a human child. And that's what I think is going on here. What if the children, they're not necessarily being taught to learn because they, the brains might taste better, but what if they're in a way, just being raised organically. 
You get my point. It looks, they make it look like they're not really caged at all. That's kind of how the children feel when they were first in there. They felt like everything was fine, everything is peaceful, they could go anywhere they want. They didn't really feel caged up, like, you know, how a livestock animal would if it was in, like, a factory or something, like, you know, in a cage, a little small cage. That's how the children feel if they were locked up, but they're not. They're allowed to free roam and do what they want. So, in my opinion, I feel like the children are being raised organically. And I feel like that's why they're trying to teach him, which is very dangerous, by the way, because as we all know, one of the greatest things or the biggest things that you never want to do when you're caging someone, especially if they're children or whoever, if they're not really that smart and you're wanting to keep them prisoner, you do not teach them. That instant, you do not teach them. It's a very, very risky move trying to teach someone how to, let's say, write, how to speak, whatever. It's something very, very risky. And since we do know that these children are being taught at an accelerated pace, they're doing some crazy questions and all that in the test, we know that their intelligence is pretty damn high. Even probably for the younger kids, they're still what's somewhat smarter than probably the average kid at their age. And so when you take time to think about this, it's very dangerous for the farm or the people trying to grow this livestock to actually teach them because eventually one day if they grow smart enough they'll realize what is going on here and then they will rebel against the farmer and the people that are keeping them in there and try to escape and I do like how that was actually brought up in the chapter I really respect the writer like I said I don't really know much about the writer or anything as I said in last week's I haven't actually took the time to look it up any more details on it but I really respect how the mangaka actually allowed the orphans the children to realize something is off here. Why would they teach us? Why would they allow us to grow smarter when it's very dangerous? I love how the mangaka actually clarified that and tried to bring that up as a topic because that's one of the things that could actually cause problems later on and be rather stupid. Like, why would they try to teach the children and when the children eventually get, you know, smart up and they escape? I mean, it's something very dangerous. There has to be something that could stop the children from getting out or something. And so I'm glad that this was actually brought up in this chapter. It makes me respect the writer so far a lot. After something like that. So let's look at the conflict. The farmer. The mama. The, the mother that's watching over all the children. Which has raised them like a mother figure their entire lives as they've been there. So the mother... She, as I've already kind of stated in this video, she is the farmer. She is the one watching over the livestock and making sure they stay in order and they're all there. And they're all there in an orderly fashion. None escape per day. And... As always, when it comes to a certain amount of livestock or anything, animals tend to be tagged. It is something that happens in everyday life. It, it happens. We all know, if you're fully aware, animals in zoos, even, you know, you have it to where people go out and try to tag animals in the wild just so they can keep track of where they're at, it happens very often. And when you think about it like that, the children being tagged makes complete sense. I mean, if they're being raised as livestock, it makes sense that they would be tagged somewhere. And if I had to place any bets, I bet that serial number on all of the orphans' necks, that probably has something to do with the tag that's in their bodies. I I'm willing to bet they probably have to open up their skin or something to remove a tag. And it, it kind of makes me question, how did they not realize they were tagged? Like, how did they get tagged? I mean, I we really don't know a whole lot about everything. Like, we don't know why they have these numbers on their necks a lot, like how they got them. Because you'd think if they were kind of imprinted on or something or stamped on, it would make the, you know, children scream or, you know, wiggle or something. They wouldn't like that. And so it raises many questions of, like, how the children got the stamps to begin with, like, on their necks, and how the children even get there to begin with. It uh, raises a lot of questions, which I think eventually will be answered. So... First chapter overall has it to where the kids have to figure out how they can get these transmitters out of their body and also outwit the farmer to get out of there with all the children in the middle of the day, even though there is a wall completely wrapped around the entire place. They are definitely enclosed. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.